Hey everyone, it's the Angry Honey Badger here, and it's time to take a look at a build video today. We're going to be playing as Fizz in the mid lane, going up the explosive brand, who actually isn't that explosive this game, because he's going to get shut down at the beginning, because that's what Fizz does. And this is uh, kind of right after they just tweaked him, took his numbers down a little bit. We're going to see if he's still viable and see if he does plenty of damage, and uh, I'm going to already tell you I think he's fine. So... But let's go ahead and we're going to talk about all types of stuff in this build today. We're going to talk about abilities, we're going to talk about runes and masteries, also items that you should consider purchasing with Fizz. I'll give you a few options there, just kind of depending on what you want and how your playstyle just kind of differs from others. So we're going to just go ahead and talk about that stuff. First, we're going to start off with probably getting a kill in a second, but we're also going to start off with his abilities and what sequence we're going to do for those. But here we've kind of picked on Brand a little bit, so all we have to do is, I'm just going to close the gap really quick with my E, and and then just run at him with a Q and a W, and I'll just kill him real quick. So, just trying to get him to avoid a couple of those abilities from him here. We're just going to jump in and hit him once, and that should do it. So, we'll pick up a kill. We'll get kind of low, but we'll go back to base now. At level 1, early in the game, there's two different starts I like to do when I'm playing as Fizz. Um, if I'm going against a bursty mid character, such as Brand or LeBlanc, somebody who does a lot of damage fast... I want more damage against them early to usually beat them down quicker because they usually take more damage because they're a little bit squishier. So I started with a Dorn's Ring and a couple health pots. If you're going up against somebody who isn't quite as bursty, um, just I don't know, maybe somebody like a, I don't know, a Scion maybe, who is actually super bursty. Now nah, about a Swain, we'll do that. Here actually we're gonna go jump on Brand because once you get a little bit of damage, what you wanna do is continuously harass them. We're gonna go ahead and pick up another kill. And what, so then if you're going to go up against somebody who's not super bursty, what you're probably going to want to do is start with boots and health pots because that mobility will actually help you move around a lot and uh, secure all types of stuff. There we get an assist because Hoyt, luckily, we were looking for that nocturne. Anyways, let's go ahead and talk about these abilities now in the sequence. First, there is his passive, which is called Nimble Fighter. What happens there is you actually take less uh, damage from units, I believe. You ignore unit collision and take less damage from basic attacks. Um, it's increased every three seconds. So you're just kind of a nimble fighter. It's kind of nice. The main thing about that is that you avoid the unit collision. Here we're going to jump in. We're going to pick up another kill. Good gank by Hoyt there. And uh, that's your main thing. You can keep picking on mids. And this is a pretty easy lane to gank. Vi, Vi with Fizz. I mean, that's a pretty easy kill on somebody like Brand. So we're going to keep, uh, keep working on killing him. Farm up a little bit. And, uh, you know, just do all that. So then let's get to our abilities, our other ones now. First, at level 1, I usually put a point into my C-Stone Trident, which is his W ability. When you're auto-attack, it deals damage. It's pretty awesome. When you activate it, it does even more damage. Basically, that's, a, that's as simple it is, as it is. Well, you can activate that first and then use your Q ability, which is your, uh, your strike. And you're going to dash... A short distance hitting them, it's going to deal damage once again, and it will hit and deal on hit effects. Um, so you, like I said, you can activate that W early and all of that. It's really fun. And then at level 3, put a point into your playful slash trickster. And what happens here is you can hop onto your trident and onto a nearby location. You become untargetable for, I believe, 0.75 seconds, and then you can land, which will deal damage. Um, you can hop over small walls and terrain with this as well. We'll do that a couple times in this game so you can see what that looks like. Um, here we're going to get into a fight. Came to try to gank for Poppy. Nocturne showed up at the exact same time. I do have Jax ignited. He will die to the ignite, so I'll pick up a kill on him. Here Brand shows up though, so I'm going to have to try to get away from this. But luckily Vi is showing up right now, so I'm going to turn around and join back in. I'm going to flash in here to get closer and try to help him deal with this Brand. And I will secure the kill on him as well with that playful trick. You're just kind of jumping on him. And uh, yeah, so a couple kills there. We're doing pretty good early on in this game. Um, the damage from Fizz really was taking was taken down early, so he doesn't do as much. And it does feel like it's not quite as much, but it's still plenty of damage if you play him fine. So um, I don't think he's really a problem anymore, um, at least as early. So then finally, our ultimate at level 6, put a point into that. And that's going to be Chum the Waters. You can throw out a fish in a line, and then you're going to have that massive shark come up. And it is going to slow them when it is on them, and it's going to, uh, I believe, knock them up for a second and deal damage to them. So uh, it's really nice. Anybody around the area, too, will get, get slowed by it as well. So And they'll take a little bit of uh, damage around them, too, I think. So, um, yeah, it's really fun if you want to throw it into massive team fights. It's really good for just catching up to a target if you're trying to kill them. I believe we're going to finish off a couple people with it, too, just because once it hits them, it sticks to them, and that's going to kill them. So there's nothing really they can do to avoid that too much. 
But early on through this game, we've been building some items. Let's talk about those. First, what we did is we picked up a uh, sheen early on, was our first main item that we went for. What we did with that is we built it immediately into a Lich Bane. Lich Bane's kind of your core main item. It's kind of your massive damage dealer, especially early on in the game. I also did finish off my boots, which we went with Magic Penetration Boots, because... We just need the magic pen. That's what we want to do. We want to just blow people up as fast as possible. We actually killed him there, but I will actually die to Jax now because Jax is doing pretty good this game. And uh, so you really want to finish off the Slitch Bane. It's going to give you that AP. It's going to give you some mana as well. It's going to give you a little bit of movement speed. Does it still give movement speed? I don't think it does anymore. Maybe it does. I can't remember. Anyways, the main thing is that it has that passive of Spellblade. After using an ability, your next basic attack will deal bonus magic damage equal to um, 50 plus 75% of your ability power. So as you build more AP, your next standard attack will crush your next person. So all you basically do to get that activated is you activate that W and then you charge in with your Q with that strike and you're just going to hit them for tons of damage. You're going to see people get half-lifed or pretty much full-lifed in a little bit once there's a little bit more damage on top of this build. So um, we're going to see how much that does. But Lich Bane is kind of your core main item. We kind of rush that. And once we get that... Um, you just deal a lot of damage. You already deal a lot, but you're going to deal even more. So that's going to be very helpful. So Lich Bane is what you want early on. <clears throat> now we're going to talk about another item I see some people build on Fist, And I think it works fine. <clears throat> I just personally do not care for it myself. Because I just don't. Because I, I'm lazy. Whatever. But it's a death fire grasp. And it's not bad at all. It does give you a lot of AP. It does give you some cooldown reduction, which isn't bad as well. It also has that unique active, which will allow you to deal all that tons of damage to them. But I almost feel like, as much as that's great, maybe for if the enemy team is tankier, that's a great item. But if they're all this squishy, I don't think it's as necessary because I'm already going to be blowing up people with just the Lich Bane and just damage on top of that. So I think that one kind of comes down to what the enemy team is all about. Here we're going to actually shut down Jax. We're going to jump over that wall to try to get a little distance between us. Um, there you can see how you can use Playful Trickster to just jump over uh, small terrain. So you can get distance between you pretty quick. Or if you're trying to close the gap, if they flash through something like that, you can chase fairly easily too so um you just have to remember you can do that through terrain it takes a tiny bit to get used to and you miss occasionally i think i miss like i coming up once or twice this game just because you know paying attention super professional job but um yeah just if you want the death fire grasp you can do that it will work well but i would suggest it maybe against a little bit tankier opponent in mid against a brand i got i don't really need to worry about that i'm just gonna jump on him once or twice that'll kill him so I don't have to worry about that as much. But the next thing we're going to start to build, we already picked up one of the items building into it, is we picked up that needlessly large rod. We will be building that with a blasting wand into our death cap. So that's going to give us just our tons of damage. And that's really going to help us kill everybody even faster. It's going to increase all of our AP ratios as well, or just increase it overall. And uh, we're going to get 120 ability power from that. And that's just really going to help us just hit people even harder. The main thing is we're teaming it up with that Lich Bane. Here we're going to flash. We're going to pick up the kill on Nocturne. We're going to get slowed, though, by um, her. But I'm just going to turn around, throw the alt on her. That'll slow her down. And we're going to hit her once or twice. And that's going to pick up the double kill. So you can just do a lot of damage to anybody if you want. Basically, if anyone's soloed out or singled out as a target, you can pretty much annihilate them by yourself. Um, it only becomes a problem for Fizz when tons of people show up. And you just start to get... All of that CC, all that crowd control, that becomes a problem. Here, I think actually I'm going to jump over a bomb as it goes for me while I'm at the wolves. So you can also avoid all types of stuff with that playful trickster when things are coming through. So just little things to take note of in case you've never played Fizz before. We've just finished off that death cap. Now we're sitting pretty well. We're going to have a lot of AP at this point, and we're going to just hit people really hard. We actually uh, picked up another kill on Jax. There's actually a lot of killing, and this is a very long game. Um, even though we have a decent lead most of the game, so uh, they, 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 they put up a fight a little bit, and I get caught out a few times by accident. So um, we have to play it a little bit safe just to make sure we win it. But continuing forward with the build, now talking about what we want to max out first. Typically, you're going to max out that W first. At least that's what I like to do. Max out your Q second, and then max out your tr playful trickster, your E ability last. Obviously, Chum the Waters put points into that at level 6, 11, and 16. Pretty standard stuff for putting points into your ultimate. But then, um, that's just, you know, that's going to set up your abilities. That's what you want. That W helps farm a lot, too, while you're early on in the game. It also just does a lot of damage, too, and it does that ticking damage. So you can hit somebody. They might have 50 health, and you can run away. They're going to die to you, and you'll be safe and sound. So we're going to go ahead and talk more about the next abilities and or, uh, items, at least. 
What we did there is picked up a little cloth armor and an amplifying tome. We're going to be building that towards our Zonia's Hourglass. That'll be the first part of it. But that's the next main item we're going to work towards. We could use the armor. It's never a bad thing. And then it'll also give us the ability to go into stasis once we finish off the item for 2.25 seconds, avoiding all damage. So which is nice since you have to dive pretty deep in with Fizz. Then we're going to pick up a really simple kill on Lux. And here's another low champion. He's going to block part of it, but I'll be able to pick him up. And we're just going to trickster away after the shark goes off and kills him. So, or we don't even trickster, we'll just walk away. That works. So, Brand's trying to get away. Brand is going to die. All right, good. Picked up another kill. How many do we have so far? 14? 14 kills? Yeah, sounds pretty right for Fizz. Pretty standard stuff. Now, as for your runes, there's a few different ways you can do this. I like, you know, just the pretty standard way. You're going to go with magic penetration marks. I usually... Just depends. You can go with armor seals. They're pretty helpful since, you know, you're jumping deep into team fights, and it helps just have a little bit of armor there. There I get actually completely crowd controlled into the ground. I couldn't even move that whole time, so I'm going to get blown up there. But um, if you need, you know, the armor, that's good, especially depending on the mid you're up against. But if you want, I mean, you could take mana regen ones too if you really, really wanted to. But I think the armor ones work out really, really well. And then as for your glyphs, you go with the AP scaling ones. And then for the quintessences, you'll also take the AP ones there. So you're going to have a little bit of AP at the beginning of the game, which will help you deal all that extra damage early on. And uh, we're almost, almost done with that, with that hourglass. We're getting close. We also do have our boots finished off now. The hourglass is finished. But our boots are done. We also have them fully done with the home guard. So we can get out of base quicker or defend it since we are currently down in inhibitor. They are ahead of us on that. We are ahead in gold, but they do have the minion pushing advantage right now. So we have to play a little bit safer right now. Um, so that's what we're going to do for now there. You can jump over the wall, get your to your buffs if you want to, and you can do all of that. Now next, we're going to go ahead and cover those masteries. And as for masteries, 2190 is probably what you're going to want to do. 21 in that offensive tree will help you with all of the damage that you need over there. It'll give you everything that'll help you out, like some of the ability power, the magic penetration, and all of that stuff. And then 9 in the def defensive tree, you're going to pick up that extra scaling health and a little bit of extra health early, and then maybe pro some of that magic resistance early on, especially if you're going mid lane. And that'll help you out early on here. We're getting Poppy chased by Jax. Going to jump in here and annihilate him because that's the thing to do. I'm also going to avoid his stupid stun because... I don't want to get stunned. And then here, Hoyt's killing a couple of them. I'm going to jump in and murder this Lux. See, just pretty much half-life completely gone because of just the EQ combo with the Lich Bane. It's, I, I mean, I know, tons of damage, it, but it is. It's just tons of damage. So that's what's going to be helpful. Now, at this point in the game, you need to kind of address survivability. And um, if not, if you haven't already. So at this point, we picked up a Blasting Wand, and we also picked up a Giant's Belt. And there's a couple different things you could do for survivability, and we're going to actually do two of the things for survivability. The first one I like to do is just get some flat health, because right there I would have died if I didn't have that, that Giant's Belt. And what we just built it into was a Rylax Crystal Scepter. So what we want there is just all that health. It's also going to give us a great slow, which is awesome for basically not letting anyone ever get away. So when you do jump on them, it's even easier to kill them, or at least they're not going to escape as fast because they're just going to die. And uh, it's also going to give us more AP in that health. So that's very, very helpful for Fizz. You're going to probably need some health. Like I said, since you dive in so deep, it is helpful to have some kind of survivability. Now at this point in the game too, another thing I haven't bought that I could address, there actually got completely caught out. I wasn't even paying attention. I got tunnel vision. Didn't even realize I was like getting hardcore ganked. But um, what you want to do if I haven't addressed it, a situational item, I'll call it more so, is the Abyssal Scepter. And that would be the next thing I would work towards right now. And I actually have picked up some magic resist because I do need a little bit at this point. Um, but that would be a great item, and it's going to give you even more damage, but at this point, we're, like, we almost don't even need more damage, because we hurt that much. So, you can do the Abyssal Scepter, but at this point, what I like to do is I'll actually be building a Guardian Angel, because once your Guardian Angel, let's say you get, it gets triggered off and you die, once you come back, your E and your, or your Q and your W, everything's going to be pretty much back up. You can pretty much kill whoever was waiting to kill you, because you do so much damage, so... That's what we're going to be just doing with that. We're going to be building towards a Guardian Angel at this point. And that will be a pretty much a full build. The only thing I would change is if, you don't, if you're not worried about the Guardian Angel as much and they're starting to build some magic resist against you because, let's face it, you're Fizz and you hurt and they probably are going to be building magic resist, what you can do is you can get the Void Staff. 
that will also work well. Another thing that I will say is a little bit more situational again is if you are going to go ahead and do the Rylize because I think it's a solid choice for health, you can also do the Leandries and you can get, you know, a little bit more damage there. You get a little bit more health and you'll have, you know, all that amplified damage from them getting slowed because you have Rylize. So um, a Leandries would also be pretty good. So those are your kind of situational ones. I like the GA though because I have the ability to come back and then blow them up after that. But if you ever wanted to change any of that stuff around, those are the three kind of recommended side items you could totally deem as viable. Poppy's getting jumped on a little bit by Jax. Nocturne actually is going to come in. We're just going to do a little bit of damage to him. Poke around at him, waiting for the rest of the team to get here. And uh, it's not going to be too tough. We're going to jump all over people, dashing around, standard stuff, poking them in the face, picking up kills. Just, yeah, stabbing people with your trident. Yeah, pretty easy. Picking up double kills, jumping around, not even having to worry about dying there. We do have the, the Guardian Angel. And we got about half life, so nothing, nothing terrible happening there. But Fizz is still really fun, really strong. There's the delayed stasis, just you know, don't need it. Um, here we find Lux. She's just yeah, gonna get melted by all of us. But you could see when I came in with the QW, with that Lich Bane, that's just gonna kill him off. So that works really, really well. But if you have any questions about Fizz, go ahead and put the comments down below. I think he's still super viable. Give him a try, guys, and I'll just see all of you in the next build video. Now we're going to root in the Thresh. We're also going to hit him with that E and that Q. It's going to deal a lot of damage. It's going to be fun. We're going to kill them. Here, Lee Sin shows up. But if I stick around with my teammate, we're going to be able to pick up another kill on him after we flash to pick that up. 